This week at Morning Water Motorsports, we kind of get a rear suspension in this thing, and uh, hopefully we can get a floor in it, and maybe a firewall. So stick around. The floor in this thing is going to be 95% carbon fiber. Our friends at Full Throttle Signs, maybe Full Throttle Composites, I don't know if he's made a name for it, whatever. Uh, they make the carbon fiber for us. It's beautiful stuff. Yeah, stay tuned. Now, if you remember from the last video, me struggling to put this rear end in this car, uh, we took a couple measurements while it was in here. So that leads us to the four-link bar. So this car has a cool four-link bar kit. Let me show you. This is titanium from our friends at MFD Race. Uh, and we're going for 21 and a half, and you can see here we have 26. So we got to shorten them. Then we'll do a little welding on titanium. So generally when I set these up, uh, I'll leave a little bit of thread showing here and there should be a jam nut in here. Uh, I don't have it, it's custom. Code. So the jam nut's about a quarter inch and then I have about three eighths of an inch of uh, thread sticking out on each end. That way you can shorten it or lengthen it and still have appropriate uh, thread engagement. So let's get these cut down. And we'll start welding. And there we have 21 and a half inch bar. Now let's cut the rest and we can get set up to weld. I've got these all tacked up. Uh, now I'm going to back purge these. And what that means is I'm going to take gas another tank and put it on the back side of this weld as well as I'm going to switch to this bigger cup and put tons of gas on the outside I'm going to crank my uh, CFM up There's one, just need the plug welds, but I let this cool down quite a bit. So, weld the rest out. And there's some titanium four link bars. So next on the agenda is a wishbone. And I made this jig uh, today. So should hold it straight and true. Uh, these are slotted. So I can do a maximum width of, uh, I think it was 23. And then this is slotted two. And right now it's at 23. That, But you can move this slider if you need like a different length. So like if you move it an inch this way, you get an extra inch this way. If you know what I mean. I got a piece fitted up. On to the next one. So I went ahead and test fit the wishbone into the car and I am happy with it. So I'm starting on the X-Brace to strengthen it up. Once the X-Brace is tacked together, we remove everything for final welding. So I put the wishbone all back together and I have the mounts tacked in the car, but I'm noticing something. I'm noticing something that we better check before we weld anything in permanently. So I've got the wishbone sitting in here with some mounts and 
we have a bit of a problem. I have this in here to simulate what's called a pro jack. You see these little half circles right here? So we use jacks under these race cars called a pro jack. And it spans from four link bracket to four link bracket, just like that, lifts the car up in the pits. And I need this wishbone to not interfere with that, which kind of kicks the mounts up. And then it's gonna limit my travel of the wishbone down. So that's, I'm gonna have to tack those and cycle it to make sure it does not bind at full droop. So now I'm gonna take the jack stands out and lower the suspension to simulate separation from a radial tire car, which this is. Yeah. Let's go. That sounds good, so maybe crisis averted. So, uh, right there's eight inches of travel and our shocks only have six. So there's room for him to go to a bigger shop if he wants to. And we have tons of slip yet in our uh, wishbone slip is great no bottoming out and when it's all the way up this is still is flush with that in that bush perfect now let's focus our attention on the anti-roll bar this is another hammer concepts and designs part uh it's beautiful it's artwork uh jewelry for men we'll say so i've already got it uh 20 inches center to center and that is because we will be using the mount that's included into the four link bracket itself. So our link's gonna land in one of these holes and they are, if you remember, 20 inches apart. Also, we got the shock we're gonna set up too. Uh, we can kind of do it all at one swipe here. So here I am getting the shocks positioned. I, You can see that the anti-roll bar's in. I apparently did not uh, take a video of that, I guess. But anyway, We'll get both these shocks tacked in and we can move on to the anti-roll bar links that go down to the rear end. We've got shocks, we've got an anti-roll bar, but we need links to go from the anti-roll bar to the rear end. So when I do this, I point this up 15 degrees. I don't know, something like this. And the reason for that is when a radial car goes down the track and extends, this starts to come down as the rear extends. And now this will be at its strongest point, hopefully, when the rear is fully extended. Here are the anti roll bar links. We'll get them cut and tacked up, mocked up in there. Well, next step is to cycle this whole suspension, run it through uh, its range of motion while it's all tacked. That way, if it doesn't work right, you can uh, pull it back off without cutting a solid weld. We'll run it through that, see if it all works the way it should, and then we'll finish weld everything and add some supports and all that. Guys, well, I'm happy with that. So let's get this rear pulled out uh, and get everything well done. All right, I think we're happy with the rear suspension, so let's uh, weld it on. welded up it's time to move to what I have been dreading and that is the firewall it has to be the least favorite thing 
out of all of this, but still needs to be done. So let's do a little CAD, cardboard aided drafting. Now while I'm doing that, my dad's in the back making templates for the rear shelf, which we end up not even using. Once I'm happy with the fitment of the template, I'm gonna transfer it to this piece of sheet metal, which is 22 gauge cold rolled steel. I'll then grab the cutoff wheel, cut it out. Now that it's cut out, we'll fit it up here. Then we'll mark out a pattern for bead rolling, which strengthens the material up. Kind of makes it look cool, at least in my opinion. Now just be rolling. So we have a firewall somewhat in. The bottom portion to here to the tube uh, requires a little different strategy because this is super thin and this is thick. So you use what's called, uh, let's see if I can get that. Silicon bronze, it's called. It, it kind of just, bonds the two together. It's like brazing a little bit, uh, but you take what? Well, I'll, I'll show you. It is somewhat like you're just welding, uh, but you want to do it at a much lower amperage and it almost just like flows in. I don't know, it's kind of hard to explain unless you just jump in and do it. Now, in order to fit the next piece of the firewall, I actually have to do a little bit of the floor first. So here I am welding in a piece of the floor. My dad gets this all cleaned up, ready for the next piece of the floor. And we have our next piece of the firewall. Uh, I didn't film, I don't think any of this, maybe. Uh, sheet metal is uh, my least favorite part. I don't feel like I'm that great at it, so it's all, I'm always learning uh, and I get frustrated easily with it, but Let's get this cleaned up, tacked in. You know, for not liking it, I think it's turning out pretty cool, actually. We are gonna be using the silicon bronze here again. Uh, sheet metal too. Just take your time. You don't wanna burn through it. Notice I put some bars in here. There. Well, thunder today. Uh, I waited to get the fire, this piece in. Before I did that, uh, I wanted to see where it was gonna land before I put them bars in. Uh, and they were a struggle to put in. It was tough. I knew it was gonna be tough though, so. We got them in. So I did not show you guys this part where I made these two pieces for the start of the floor where it meets the firewall. Uh, but I need to do it on this side and I have the template from the other side. So we'll put it up in there, so hopefully it fits and uh, cut it out. We got both four pieces in. Now we're gonna try for the last piece of the firewall and we have the old template. We'll see how it fits. And I guess since I didn't show you any of the other side, here's my dad making the template for the driver's side. He used the old template, just flipped it over. It should be the same-ish, close enough. And there we go, guys. Last piece of the firewall. Let's get it cleaned up, um, tacked in. Also did the driver floor while I was at it. Uh, but we'll put that in next week. Back to welding with the silicon bronze. I kind of do it the opposite of the other panel. It looks cool. Maybe there's a reason for it. I don't know. Introduces heat in a different part of the bar. Well, let's say that, yeah. Gonna finish up most of the silicon bronze while I'm here. Uh, so I don't have to get in here and do it again. And there we have uh, mostly finished firewall. Let's have to finish welding. And then seam seal and paint and drill a whole bunch of holes. So we're ruining it anyway, but I think it turned out pretty good. For, I think it turned out pretty good for me hating sheet metal. I still hate sheet metal. Well, I think we're gonna end this episode there. This firewall took longer than I thought it was going to. 
We did do some other stuff uh, that you'll probably see in the next video. Floor, the steel floor under the driver is all ready to go in. Uh, we got some pieces for the back panel ready to go in too. Um, so I guess if you're interested in seeing the carbon work and tubs, tune in to the next one. Thanks guys.